So I am uh, here to say a few words on behalf of uh, Mrs. Viorica Dancilo, who is a member in the European Parliament, uh, and I work with her every day. I would like to thank you for your kind invitation to this uh, touching event, actually, and I will try to be very short because we're at the end of, uh, of this event. So each year on the last day of February, we celebrate International Rare Disease Day, a reminder of our need to increase access to the right diagnosis and adequate treatment for the people confronting the harsh reality of suffering from rare diseases. This year's slogan, day by day, hand in hand, signals the fact that the continuous and coordinated action is necessary from all the relevant actors in this matter, patients and their families, medical and pharmaceutical personnel, relevant associations and NGOs, as well as other actors of the civil society and authorities at all levels. Rare diseases represent a public health priority of the European Union, and we must continue to act together in order to harmonize national sectorial policies. In Romania, statistics show that there are 1.3 million people suffering from a rare disease. On a national level, rare disease diseases are a priority for the healthcare system. The National Alliance for Rare Disease of Romania and the National Council for Rare Disease within the Ministry of Public Health have been working on a national rare disease plan. In order to increase funding for patients affected by rare disease, one possible solution is implementing the provisions of the national plan by using structural funds. In the case of rare diseases, raising awareness as to their devastating impact on the patient's lives must be part of a continuous and thorough worldwide process. We support the initiative of the Rare Disease Patients Associations to declare 2019 the European Year of Rare Disease. Coordinated action in Europe will ensure that the voice of the people suffering from rare disease will be heard stronger. National strategies and plans for rare diseases must be consolidated and increasingly integrated into common European approaches in order to transform the results of medical research into innovative treatments, helping more and more patients. I would like to thank you again. Thank you very much. Clearly these messages from the Parliament are very important because we've I think it's very clear from today there's much more work that is required and uh, Eurydice is certainly taking the lead in, in, in really being the face of rare diseases at a European level and I'm really, really pleased to, invi to invite its president, Turkel Andersen from Denmark, to close this event on Eurydice's behalf. Thank you very much. Thank you. My voice may not be completely clear today. And it's not because I have a cold, it's because I think we've heard some presentations this morning which were really very moving. So I think no one will blame me if uh, I do uh, a breach on protocol by thanking first and foremost those who represented the patient's voice here today. Uh, we heard some uh, extremely uh, striking uh, examples of what life is with uh, a rare disease. Uh, and what kind of challenge you have to live, uh, both being a parent or a patient with a rare disease, and uh, also to take on you to represent patients in different fora like this one. Uh, and it was very moving to, to hear the story about uh, Saya's mother, what she went through, uh, Saya's story, uh, and I think there was no uh, one in this room who was not about to cry on that story. Um, <clears throat> I was also uh, sincerely touched by the stories uh, of uh, Karl Lafratovsky and Halva Kusik, the testimonies they took uh, to us about how to actually influence policy making uh, in rare diseases. Uh, and not only because uh, those were important contributions showing how much you can actually qualify uh, the uh, the decision process at EMA, uh, the design of protocols uh, by by adding your personal experience and the the fact that you can reach out to a patient group 
through uh, very dedicated and very uh, well uh, educated uh, patient representatives, uh, but also by the fact that they actually demonstrate how dignified you can do it, that you can actually uh, contribute uh, in a way where you can hardly distinguish between the voice of a very professional person and the voice of a patient. And sometimes I just wonder if we are getting too professional, if we, in in way of trying to channel our uh, beliefs, uh, our wishes uh, for uh, having things done the right way, uh, we down tune too much uh, our own personal experience and how much difficulty we have to face in order really to contribute the way we can. And please, uh, even though uh, being emotional about things may not be well perceived in all instances, I think everybody, at least who have had some contact with rare disease families, realize to what extent this is really uh, an, a burden on our lives and how much we uh, struggle to make our voices heard uh, and that we should be respected for having this comprehensive look on our situation and the situation of those suffering from rare diseases uh, and that we provide the whole picture, the complete picture of having a rare disease. So for that reason, I also uh, noticed with much pleasure uh, when Catherine uh, de, uh, de Beer, uh, Natalie Beer, uh, told about, sorry, told about the, the fact that the patients provide uh, the whole picture, not only the, the details, but uh, but but uh, not only the expression of how the disease actually comes to expression, but what it is like uh, living with that disease and what it takes to, to change the quality of life of the individual patients and to have that become one of the essential elements of uh, evaluating new medicines. Uh, like it was also stated by Philippe de, ba uh, Philippe de Bacher, uh, we, we need to really make sure that that patient voice is, is included in, in the general picture. Uh, and we heard from, uh, um, from um, um, others that the, uh, the, the, the important thing is not, not only to assess things by very concrete measures like uh, uh, how long time you're going to extend life expectancy by introducing a new treatment, but that you actually have also to inter, uh, in, uh, include uh, a broader quality of life uh, parameter into this. And we as patients are the only ones who can actually uh, give good uh, advice on how to assess quality of life improvement uh, and, and do that correctly. Um, my thanks goes also very much to uh, our commissioner, uh, Vitanis Andriukaitis, who uh, made a very uh, vehement um, um, uh, and poignant uh, presentation on why this is really something of European importance. Um, I had the impression also from a meeting this morning with him that he will be an advocate for our cause in the European scene, uh, that he will try to pass the message through to the member states that uh, that we need to collaborate across Europe uh, to make a difference for patients with rare diseases and that he will actually be the one reminding uh, those representing member states uh, in all occasions that we have to uh, comply with the principles of the European Treaty that this is not just talking about uh, patients' interests, this is about talking about uh, citizens' rights. And we have to keep that in mind that this is our right as citizens in Europe to be able to access uh, appropriate care and treatments also as rare disease patients. Um, finally, I'd like to thank the uh, members of Parliament who spoke here, Philip de Becker I already mentioned, and uh, and uh, Yorika Dancile, who was represented by Roxandra Kutunayana. Uh, also giving their support uh, to the policy initiatives that we are going to take, uh, like, for instance, uh, having a 
European Year of Rare Diseases in 2019. Um, there was a question about how Eurodis is going to follow up on the, uh, the input we had this uh, interesting morning. Uh, and I can assure you that uh, many of the things which have been set here fits extremely well with uh, what we are planning to, to do as uh, policy initiatives. Uh, it integrates well with the whole idea of how to build uh, European reference networks, taking stock of the uh, openings in the cross-border health directive. Um, having uh, this as one of the results also of the consultations which have been taking place in each of the member states who have adopted national plans will take us further. Uh, and it is my sincere hope that this will inspire uh, the rest of the European member states who have not yet reached uh, to the level of having a European plan for rare diseases, that they will go on to, 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 to do that. Um, we will uh, continue our work uh, to build learning communities, communities of patients who uh, motivate each other to take on the task of, of representing rare diseases, being patient advocates, besides having the difficult lives that we've all heard uh, instances of this morning. And, uh, and we do that uh, by having our summer schools, for instance, uh, which are really uh, a golden opportunity to learn about how to, to uh, become good patient advocates and to do the best to improve not only the innovation and, uh, and development of, of new therapies, but also to uh, make sure that you can uh, improve the access when actually drugs become available, uh, the access without further delay uh, in each of our countries. And to have that uh, be uh, a European project, uh, I, I noted with much pleasure when Philip de Becker said, that we need some kind of European structure to uh, promote that and to make sure that we get uh, access as soon as possible and that the, um, the, uh, uh, the negotiation with companies uh, could take place perhaps in a centralized procedure. Would be a fantastic thing, a goal for us to have uh, some years from now. Uh, and it's so nice that we can work in collaboration with uh, so many other stakeholders who have perceived the need for this kind of action, uh, both in the Commission, uh, at the EMA, the European institutions, uh, and also uh, within the pharma industry, where uh, I've seen uh, also some testimonies this morning uh, of uh, sincere commitment to making a difference. Um, so by this, I would like to conclude this session but, uh, but uh, also in respect of a tradition we're trying to be built, I would uh, conclude this, um, this morning session by uh, asking all of you to raise and to the benefit also of those who have been with us in the virtual community to join hands uh, and, um, and to celebrate what is becoming really a global event, the Red Sea Day of 2015. Thank you, Kathy, for your taking out the room. Thank you. Raise hands for rare diseases everywhere. Thank you very much. And for blood circulation. <laughs> From here, it's gorgeous.